Hi everyone, welcome back to our second part of our video. Uh, we're still on bending and twisting of shafts and remember on our last video we were looking at uh, gear systems. These gears were at a uh, straight uh, mounted uh, paper, uh, parallel to each other and they are at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. Remember, yeah, this driver gear is at an angle of 90 degrees to the horizontal here. So uh, we were looking at those gear systems. Now, let's go back and, and recall what we spoke about. We said that if my driver gear is turning anti-clockwise, since we're working with involute gears, the pressure force which is applied on my driven gear will be applied at an angle of 20 degrees to the line of action. Now my line of action, remember, is always perpendicular to the center line of my two gears. So this is the line of action is always perpendicular. Then we said that since I have the pressure force or the normal force, which is acting at an angle of 20 degrees, I can find the two horizontal force and the vertical force. The horizontal force, which is in actual fact uh, my tangential force, this tangential force is always perpendicular to the center of my two gears. Always perpendicular. Remember that. And my radial force, which is on the vertical, is always parallel to the center of my two gears. So this we can actually say is the centripetal force because it's the force that tends to separate these, or it's the force that wants to separate these two gears apart. And my um, tangential force is actually my driving force which is always tangent to my two gears. So these two gears share, share the same uh, uh, um, tangential force. So that was those gears. So now the next section that we'll look at is where now we have two gears that are, that are meshing together, but the center of the gears lie at an angle. So here I've got the gear A, which is my driver gear, and I've got another gear here, which is my driven gear. Now, these two gears are meshing together, but their center lies at a specific angle. Right? So this is the center of the driver gear. So that's the center of the driver gear. And this is the center of the driven gear. Center there. So my shaft, gear shaft there, and the shaft there. So these two gears are at a specific angle and let's say this angle right here is at an angle theta. So let's just put an angle there. Angle theta. At a specific angle theta. So it's theta over there. Alright. So remember now my gear is rotating Let's assume that my gear is rotating clockwise. My driver gear is rotating clockwise. We know that the normal force or the pressure force will always act at, it at an angle of 20 degrees to the line of action. That's what I call it. So my line of action, I know that it's at an angle of 90 degrees to the center of my gears. And I know that my pressure force or normal force will act at an angle of 20 degrees. So if this is rotating clockwise, 
it will act at an angle of 20 degrees going in that direction there. So this is at an angle 20 degrees to the line of action. Alright, so now how do I find my two horizontal and vertical forces? Okay, so we obviously know that the horizontal and vertical force have to lie my horizontal force here has to lie on this axis and my vertical force has to lie on the vertical axis like that okay now we know that we've got an angle theta so let's assume let's put a value to this so let's say theta is equal to 30 degree. So this angle there is 30 degrees, which would make this angle here 30 degrees. So this angle, that angle, the same here. So we've got 30 degrees there. Okay. So if that is 30 degrees, and since my line of action, it is at an angle of 90 degrees here. So this angle here is 90 degrees. Remember, my line of action is always perpendicular to the center with two gears. I know that from here it's 20 degrees. There is uh, 30 degrees. So this angle right here should be 40 degrees to make 90 degrees. Then, again, if we also look at the angle over here, you consider this angle here yeah? from the horizontal to the vertical there that angle there is 90 degrees so it's 40 degrees here as you can see it's 40 degrees there it's 20 degrees here 20 plus 40 gives you 60 so it would mean that this angle here has to be 30 30 degrees so, now that I have my normal force, remember this is my Fn, that is Fn. Now, Fn is at a total angle of how much? It is at a total angle of 20 plus 30, so there it is 50 degrees. So now I can say that, alright, this is my normal force. And then horizontal force, and then I will have my vertical force. So F horizontal, F vertical. That gives me my two forces, which will obviously be at an angle of 50 degrees. Okay, so let's do another example. Uh, just to get into the groove of how this thing actually works. So again, I'm going to draw my two gears. Two gears. So here's the one gear. And here is the other gear. Okay. Remember these two gears are, uh, well it's not a perfect circle, but uh, we'll, 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 get, we'll get it right. Uh, remember the center of my two gears is at a specific angle. Alright. Okay. Okay, so now instead of this turning clockwise, I'll make it turn anti clockwise. Alright, so I've got my line of action over here. So this is my line of action over there. My line of action is at an angle of 
90 degrees to the center of my gears. I know that my pressure force will push the driven gear at an angle of 20 degrees to the line of action. So this will be Fn. That angle there is 20 degrees. Alright. I need to now calculate my horizontal or I need to find my horizontal and vertical forces which will obviously lie on the vertical axis, y axis, and my horizontal will lie on the x axis. So these are 90 degrees to each other. Okay, so I now know that the angle between my line of action and uh, the normal pressure is at an angle of 20 degrees. And I also know that from here, line of action to my center line, it is theta. Uh, sorry, it is 90 degrees. So if we are going to give Again, we say that if my assumption is that this is at an angle theta, and again, let's use for consistency, let's use the same angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so if that is 30 degrees, it will obviously make this angle here 30 degrees as well. Well, all right. So if that is 30 degrees over here, and this angle here is 90 degrees, this is 30, so this must be 60 degrees over there. Now remember, my line of action is always at an angle of 90 degrees, or it's perpendicular to my center line. So there's my line of action. So if this is 60 degrees, and that angle there is 90, so it would mean that from here, sorry, so it would mean that if this is 60, then this would make this angle here 30 degrees. So this angle from here to here, it is 30 degrees. But I already know that from here to here, it is 20 degrees. So here it should be. 10 degrees. So here I can now find my horizontal and vertical force by saying there's my horizontal, there's my vertical. At what angle are these two? They're at an angle of 10 degrees because my normal force will be at an angle of 10 degrees to the or a so to, as we can see here, at an angle of 10 degrees. So I can find these two, F vertical, F horizontal, and say that, um, again, uh, F vertical will be nothing but Fn sine 10 degrees, and F horizontal will be nothing but Fn was 20 degrees. Those are my two forces for my gears that are acting at angle. Alright, so on my next video that I'll be recording, we'll be now looking at an actual problem. We'll be solving the actual problem and we'll be calculating the forces as well as the bending moments that are acting on the shaft, and then finally we'll consider and check which of the components, whether pulley, flywheel, or gears, are causing the maximum bending moment on my shaft, and then we'll obviously design for the maximum bending moment. All right, uh, let's stay tuned for our next video, and then we'll start solving the problems.